Okay, so this is recording now. Um, what I want to just talk about today, there won't be a homework today, but I want to talk a little bit about um, my different approach to things. First of all, I want to talk about probably the most basic concept in math, which is also one of the most misunderstood, and that is, what is a number? Now, just a quick show of hands. If I put four up there, how many of you would tell me that that's a number? Most people would, right? A lot of you are a little leery. If he's asking, that means it's a trick. And it is. That's just a numeral. It's an amount. To be a number, there has to be more to it. To truly be a number, we'd have to have something like four cows telling us what it is that goes with it. A true number has the two parts. The amount, or telling us how much, which I'm going to call the count. And then the label, which tells us what it is that we have four of, which I'm going to call the name. Now, this doesn't mean I'm going to be one of those math teachers that marks everything wrong if you don't have the labels on. That's not my purpose. But having those labels there explains how we work with the numbers. To, to look at that, let's look at our two most basic math operations and how these numbers work. So we're going to look at addition and multiplication. Now, some of you might be thinking, where'd subtraction go? Isn't that our, most, our second most basic operation? Well, addition and subtraction are really the same operation. There's one's going forward, one's going in reverse. Same with multiplication and division. So the rules for addition are the exact same rules for subtraction. We're just going backwards. And the same for multiplication and division. So let's look at... 4 inches plus 7 inches. What do we get? 11 inches. Okay. Well, that's enough for the semester. We can, that's worth our 380 bucks. We can go home right now, right? Okay. Probably not quite yet. Let's look at what happened with our counts and our name. Our counts, we had 4 and 7. We combined those with addition to get 11. So we combine the counts. But let's look at the names. We have inches and inches. And it became inches. When we add, we simply keep the same name. Well, let's look at multiplication. I'm just going to abbreviate inches as I am. 4 inches times 7 inches. Are all of you familiar with using the dot for multiplication instead of the, the x? It means the same thing. It's just a little less confusing once you throw in variables. 4 inches times 7 inches is going to give us 28, not inches, but inches squared. When we multiply, if you look at the counts, 4 times 7 gave us 28. We still combine the counts. But the difference is right here. We had inches and inches, and it became inches squared. When we multiply, we also combine the names. That little difference right there explains all of the rules we have for all the different forms of numbers when we add, subtract, multiply, or divide. Seems like a really subtle difference. But it actually has big consequences. It even tells us what numbers we can use in each operation. For example, um, let's say I have five cows and eight boys. Does that give me 13 cowboys? No, that doesn't work, does it? Or if I did it the other way, eight boys and five cows, but I get 13 boy cows. Um, any farm? Anybody in here with a farm background? A little bit? You can tell me that, that is a whole bunch of bull. Right there. A long way to go for a joke. But there's a point behind it. By the way, I'm a math teacher, which means I'm required by law to have a really stupid sense of humor. You'll get used to it. But there is a point behind this. I could not add cows and boys because when I add numbers, we keep the same name which implies that we must start out with the same name. 
We had to have inches and inches because we're going to keep it inches. We can't keep it if we don't start out with the same name. So if I have something like 3 feet plus 7 pounds, what do I get? That's a trick question. I get 3 feet and 7 pounds. I can't combine those. Five cows and eight boys are five cows and eight boys. I cannot combine those with addition. But when I multiply three feet times seven pounds, it's very different. I combine the counts. Three times seven is 21. But when I multiply, I also combine the names. Feet times pounds is simply foot pounds, which is a unit of torque. When I multiply... Because I'm going to combine the names, I do not need to start with the same name. Now you might be thinking of that thing, okay, now it's starting to get a little bit interesting, but I still don't see what the big point is. Well, all of the rules you've been taught for all the other forms of numbers come from this basic rule of working with whole numbers. When you add, you must have the same name, and you're going to keep the same name. When you multiply, you do not need the same name because you're going to combine the names. Okay. Well, just inches times inches is going to be. When, it's, always it's always going to be square. Well, we're going to look at rules of powers, um, like three times three. Of course, we know that's nine, but another way of writing that is three squared. Anything times itself would be a squared. Um, normally with numbers, there's just a numerical answer for it. But when we're dealing with symbols like inches or x or anything like that, then we have to deal with that power, the squared. And that's something we'll deal, we'll cover that more as the course goes on as to what, where that power comes from. But generally when you're looking at multiplying like 4 inches times 7 inches, you'd be looking at like an area of a rectangle. So you'd have inch by inch would be a square inch or inches squared. Well, let's look at another form of number, like well, everybody's favorite. Let's look at fractions. <laughs> you know, if I asked people on their way in the door what they hated most about math, four out of five people would say fractions. The other one out of five would probably say the teacher. Let's do a little review. The numerator, the top number, I just gave it away, is called the numerator. The bottom number is the denominator. Now, as I mentioned, I may have mentioned, um, I, am, I know I have very poor handwriting sometimes. I'm also a pretty poor speller, too, to go with it. Uh, if there's ever any words up here that you don't recognize, I assure you they're meant to be English. But I probably either misspelled it or my handwriting's too bad to, to see it. Don't be afraid to ask me what something says. So anyway, a numerator. What does it mean to numerate? Well, every 10 years, our government sends out people to do the census to numerate the population. What are they doing? Counting. Yeah. The numerator is a count. A denominator. Well, we have different denominations of money, different denominations of religious organizations and other organizations. To denominate means to classify or to give a name. So a fraction, the two parts, four and seven, are simply a count and a name. Just like having four inches or four cows, we have four sevenths. It's not two numbers, it's a single number with two parts. So if we go to do something with that fraction, we go to, let's say we're going to go to add two sevenths plus three sevenths. Well, somewhere around fourth grade, your teacher told you that when you add fractions, you must have a common denominator. Again, that's no special rule for fractions. Whenever we add numbers, we must have the same name. Common denominator is just having the same name. Same teacher said that when you add fractions, you add the numerators. 2 plus 3 is 5, and you keep the common denominator. Again, that's how we add any numbers. You combine the counts, you keep the same name. When you multiply... 2 sevenths times 3 sevenths. Teacher told you to do what? Just multiply straight across, right? 2 times 3 is 6. 7 times 7 is 49. Again, that's not a special rule for fractions. 
When we multiply any numbers, we combine the counts. Then we also combine the names. If I have 1 fourth plus 3 fifths, can I add those the way they're written? No, they have different names. When we get into fractions, we'll look at changing the names so that we can add them. Just like if we have, you know, 2 feet plus 3 inches, we can change those names to 24 inches and 3 inches so that we can add them. When we multiply, however, do we need the same name? No. So we can just go ahead and multiply. Combining the counts, 1 times 3 is 3, and then also combining the names, 4 times 5 is 20. So those special rules you were taught for dealing with fractions aren't special rules at all. Those are the same rules we use for working with whole numbers, any other form of number. Let's take a quick look at decimals. 0.21. What's the official way of pronouncing that? 21 hundredths. When we read it like that, now it's pretty obvious what's the count and what's the name. So if we had 0.21 plus 0.3, if I'm going to go set that up, would I do it this way? What's wrong with that? Now the decimal points aren't lined up. When we look at that, this is 21 hundredths. This is 3 tenths. So they have different names. Fortunately, if I just put a zero there, that's now 30 hundredths, and they have the same name. So now the decimal points automatically line up. When your, your third or fourth grade teacher taught you to line up the decimal points, all that's doing is making sure they have the same name. So now you get, oops, not 21, but... You add them up, 51, and what were we taught to do with the decimal point? Drop it straight down. Why? Well, 21 hundredths and 30 hundredths better be 51 hundredths. When we add, we keep the same name. So bringing that decimal point straight down is nothing more than keeping the same name. When I multiply, do I have to worry about lining up the decimal point? No, because when I multiply, we do not need the same name. 21 times 3 is 63. Where's my decimal point go? Three spots over, correct? Why? Well, you were taught to count one, two, three decimal places in the problem, so you got to count backwards one, two, three decimal places in the answer, right? But again, why? Well, fourth grade teacher said so, right? Well, because this is 21 hundredths. You put a lot of faith in that fourth grade teacher. This is 3 tenths. When we multiply, we combine the counts. 21 times 3 is 63. But we also combine the names. Hundredths times tenths is thousandths. When we are counting those decimal places and putting that many decimal places in the answer, all we're doing is combining the names. We've got like a minute and a half left, so let's quickly cover algebraic numbers. A lot of people really get nervous when they see the letters come in there. But with what we've seen so far, it's not much of a stretch to realize that's just a count of 4 and a name of X. Just like 4 inches or 4 sevenths or 4 pounds or 4 cows, it's just a count and a name. The difference is we know what an inch is or what a cow is, but we don't know what an X is. But it doesn't matter. 4x plus 7x, we're going to combine the counts. 4 and 7 make 11, and we keep the same name of x. What's 5x plus 2y? Trick question. 5x plus 2y. We cannot combine them with addition because they don't have the same name. But when we multiply, 4x times 7x, just like our inches, we combine the counts. 4 times 7 is... 28, x times x would be, just like inches times inches is inches squared, x times x is x squared. You could do x times x, but that's the same as x squared. Down here, the 5x times 2y, just like inches times pounds, we do the 5 times 2 is 10, x times y becomes xy, just like inches times, or feet times pounds became foot pounds, x times y is xy. Now, would it make a difference if you said 10yx? 
No, it means the exact same thing. In math, though, there's like grammar rules, just like in English. Generally, we put the variables in alphabetical order, x, y, instead of y, x. They mean the same thing. So on a test, I would count that correct either way. My math lab sometimes forces you to put it in the right in a specific order. If that ever happens in my math lab where you put in an answer and you know you got it right, it's just a different form, send me an email and I'll change it. I'll go into the system and change it for you. Um, any questions? Hopefully that little 20-minute spiel there gave you something to think about, maybe made you a little less nervous about math. Um, as you can see, there are general concepts that we tend to lose when we teach math that if we see those general concepts, it's pretty easy to figure out all those little processes in between. So with that, I'll let you guys out of here.